Hey, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm going to be doing a little concert review. I caught at the Palace Theater this past weekend David Byrne's new 2018 tour, uh, which he is doing behind his latest record, American Utopia, out now. Uh, Going to be doing a review of that very soon. Uh, before I get too deep into the details, I want to shout out our sponsor for this video, the good people over at Feedbands. They're doing a nice three-day unofficial South by Southwest uh, showcase on the 15th, 16th, and 17th, featuring a slew of artists that they have released vinyl for on their website, which is the whole point of Feedbands. Make sure to check out the link down below where you can uh, check out their site and check out the uh, event links, more event information for... Uh, for this whole showcase. Also, if you get there, uh, they have 25 cent beer, wine, and tacos, and this whole thing is sponsored by the Dash cryptocurrency, uh, which you will be able to spend on site for you uh, Dash heads, for you crypto heads. All right, so David Byrne concert. Ah, I, I bought these tickets months ago, months in advance. I think I got them like last year. I was kind of disappointed at first I guess because at the time I didn't really know what the show was going to be like. Uh, I was kind of disappointed at first that I didn't buy the tickets right away. I, I'm not much of like a um, a person who goes to shows that, <laughs> that often sell out very quickly. Um, I'm more of a person who goes to like weird, dingy, underground, obscure shows or like small clubs, that sort of thing. So if like a show that I go to does sell out or does fill up, it, it usually takes a little bit. Um, I'm not typically the type of person who goes to a concert that sells out in a day, sells out in a few days. So I, I, I'm, I'm not in that mindset to like, oh, I got to set myself a reminder to, to buy a ticket to this concert that I want to see. So I ended up like forgetting the day that tickets came out and I ended up getting tickets a few days later and, uh, the tickets that were available were not the closest, although, you know, I wasn't in the nosebleed seats or anything like that, but it ended, it ended up kind of being a, a great thing that, uh, my wife and I were positioned, uh, seat wise where we were because of just kind of the unique setup of this particular concert. Um, it was really kind of unlike anything I had ever seen before. I mean, of course, the music itself was great. Uh, but David Byrne is an artist who is notorious for putting a whole lot of thought into staging and the way that things are kind of shaped and tiered on the stage where the people are performing. Um, and I <laughs> sort of know this now because I've been reading his uh, How Music Works book, and I've been skipping around the book to different chapters and things that uh, sort of pique my interest more than others, and uh, I just finished reading his uh, his, his whole, I, I guess, uh, staging chapter, his whole chapter on staging, uh, which personally I found to be one of the least interesting chapters, but maybe that's just personally because I, I don't go and see a lot of theater. I've just been kind of watching stationary rock bands all my life, like the most active and sort of crazy or animated a rock band I see gets on stage is typically like a punk band or some shit like that, you know? So it's it's probably more as a result of just me not putting too much thought into it because maybe I haven't had that much exposure to it personally. Um, but I got to say, David and his show have really kind of opened up my eyes to the importance of that and the possibilities too, uh, because at first it didn't really look like it was going to be much. The floor was covered in what was this very even, flat, gray kind of cloth, not reflecting any light whatsoever. It was very, it was very flat, plain gray. Uh, everybody on stage was just wearing a plain gray suit, which was very much like the color of the cloth in the background. And surrounding the stage, each side of the stage behind the artists, was just kind of this shimmery, silvery, grayish, reflective material. I'm not exactly sure what it was because I wasn't that close, but it was definitely shimmery, definitely light reflecting off of it and kind of had a bit of a grayish, brownish undertone to it at times. It would kind of really reflect off the light that was surrounding it. And because there was so much gray in the area, it had kind of a grayish tone to it too, at least from where I was sitting from what I could see. So you have to kind of think like, wow, flat gray stage, gray suits, gray this, gray that. Like, the, the color, <laughs> as far as colors, this is not a very engaging stage setup. Like, it's it's very minimal, it's very even, it's very flat. Um, however, uh, this sort of allowed David and company to play with light and shadow 
and positioning in a way that was totally unique to any stage show, any musical show that I've ever seen before. Because when the X Factor came in is when all the musicians came out, and there were about 12 of them, 12 I believe, uh, people who were playing guitar, bass, keyboard, uh, an array of percussionists, a few backup singers slash dancers. I uh, hope I'm not forgetting about anybody off the top of my head. Of course, David was there. He'd play guitar occasionally. Um, I think I've got pretty much, you know, the bulk of the musicians who were there named as far as at least, you know, instrumental background. And the percussionists, there was a wide array, you know, people doing shakers and bass drums and uh, toms and snares. And um, I, I, I guess what I need to explain now is the fact that nothing was wired everything was wireless. Now, that's not to say everybody was playing acoustic instrumentation, like things were mic'd and things were plugged in, but it was all wireless and everybody's instrumentation was like going into the PA system. So everybody was wireless, nothing was hooked up, everybody had their instrumentation strapped to them or on a strap of some sort. So you either had percussionists playing on... Um, uh, basically uh, uh, stuff over their shoulders, so it was kind of like a marching band setup almost, or you had guitars and basses strapped to people, guitar, uh, keyboard, keyboard uh, strapped to the keyboard player, uh, who actually had a bunch of the horn samples like thrown into his keyboard, which was pretty fantastic, uh, because the horns sounded great, and there was a point where I was like, where the hell are these horns coming from? And then I was sort of paying attention to what the keyboard player was doing. I was like, oh, okay, the horns are coming from the keyboard, and they sound fucking awesome. But uh, <laughs> I digress there. Uh, everybody had their instrumentation strapped to them. So, so they were free to move about the stage however they wanted. So people were just dancing as they were playing. Uh, given certain songs, they would get into different formations, different shapes. There was one point where they got into like a plus sign and they were rotating in a circle. Uh, there were certain, you know, uh, again, different shapes and positions that they would all get in like a marching band. And from the standpoint that I was at, sort of at a distance, it was really cool to be looking down on them and seeing them get into these different formations and different shapes, something that I definitely wouldn't have been able to take in fully if I was super up close and at, you know, either at eye level or looking up at what was going on at the stage. Uh, also, not only did this allow them to play with different positioning and different uh, formations, because there was never a point where the percussionists were always in one section, or David was always in one section, or the guitar player or the bass player was always in one section. You know, they would get into different lines and different everything. There was one part where all of the members of the band were sort of stationed at one side of the stage and slowly marching toward David, who was like sort of taking up this moment in the, this area of the stage, and they were kind of closing in on him and sort of like making the amount of area that he had to kind of dance and move in smaller and smaller and smaller, kind of creating this sensation of claustrophobia or just being closed in on or sort of like pushed against a wall or into a corner. Um, now, the other thing that uh, this this freedom of movement movement allowed them to do is play with light and shadows and um, uh, yeah, just light and shadows and uh, I, I guess the color of of certain lights and, and that sort of thing because uh, they had different lighting setups that uh, were really minimal but super powerful given just how even the color and setup of everything was. Uh, they had one light that was on top of a pole that they just brought toward David Byrne who was standing center stage and it cast this giant shadow of his head up against the back wall. So his head was just like this giant talking shadow up against the wall. There was another point where they brought in this light that was center stage, and given how David was positioned and all of the other musicians, or they also switched up over the course of the, the song as well, they would make his uh, shadow look really gigantic and playing guitar and dancing while everybody else's shadow was like really tiny and in the corner and like dancing, kind of like almost like they had like a little party, like a little shadow party going on or something. Um, it was one of the many moments uh, across the whole performance that, that really kind of blew my mind visually. It was like, whoa, this looks so fucking cool. You see what's going on at first with just the even lighting and the gray suits and the gray floor, and it doesn't really look like anything special. But once, you know, you pull out a giant floodlight just center stage, all of a sudden the whole vision of everything totally changes because it becomes this visual of you have these musicians on stage performing and then it's almost like you have another stage in the background where you have shadow musicians playing or a shadow party going on um you know of course there were different lighting changes where you'd have different spotlight setups on different people you'd have 
lighting color changes every once in a while. There was a really fucking intense moment where they pulled out a strobe out of nowhere. It was a really intense strobe too. And like, it was just hard black to white, just so fucking hard. And it like tripped me out for a second. It was like kind of psychedelic, uh, kind of surreal and weird. And I believe they went to black at that moment. And then when they brought the lights back up, everybody was laying on the ground as if they were dead or whatever. It was like a very dark, very uh, uh, surreal kind of moment. Um, but, uh, and, and this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg or the different setups and um, uh, sort of visual concept that they had going on across the, the whole whole performance. I mean, the whole thing looked great and it was just fun to watch. It was just an incredibly engaging and inventive visual. The only thing that I could really liken it to are just marching bands. Like if you had ever seen a marching band get into a formation on like a football field, or if you had ever seen like a street band playing at a parade or Mardi Gras or something like that, that's really kind of the closest to anything that I could think of to make like a legit comparison to what was going on on stage. But honestly, it is still, even with that being the close comparison, it was like totally unlike those things in a lot of ways. But it's very clear that those things served as an inspiration for a lot of what David Byrne was trying to do uh, for these live performances. And incredible that he was able to take that and revise it and reinvent it in a way that was just like really fresh and really, uh, I guess, uh, I'll, I'll say original, as original as you can be given uh, how obvious the source material was. Um, the sound of everything was great, like the mixing was great, the fact that everybody was sort of mic'd and everything was wireless didn't really seem to impact at all. Um, the quality of the sound, at least to my ears, the fact that you had so many musicians kind of playing in this really kind of collective way, I think gave uh, a lot of these tracks, the newer David Byrne tracks, the, uh, talking head hits, uh, many of which came off r remain in light. Um, a, a lot of those hits, uh, gave those hits new life, you know, especially have so many percussionists on the song, although it's, it's nothing really new for David Byrne to be touring with a big band and having a lot of percussionists on on certain tracks. So I, I guess a long time fans, that, that won't be anything new or crazy. But still, uh, the, the marching band percussion, uh, the marching band sort of percussive setup, uh, I guess, and to have everybody kind of moving and dancing freely across the stage and uh, uh, have everybody sort of performing in this really collective fashion because uh, with the way that they were moving, and the freedom that they had to move, it was it was almost like they had more of an ability to just kind of like perform with each other, perform to each other, and um, uh, you know perform more as like a collective of musicians interacting uh, in just a sort of uninhibited fashion, as opposed to a bunch of people statically stuck in one spot facing the audience and just thinking of performing for the audience, you know? Because really, it's it was it was more like watching a bunch of people kind of like talk and party together musically and and the audience is just kind of being witness to that and um, it, it definitely created a different vibe it created a different sensation uh, they did a few encores including a very powerful super powerful um, uh, Janelle Monet cover who the, the title of which I remember the song the title of which kind of escapes me it's that say his name say her name track uh, the, the whole song about uh, uh, mentioning those and remembering those who have been lost to police brutality um, which it was a really powerful rendition. Uh, you know, the people on stage were, <laughs> I'm getting upset just thinking about it. Um, people on stage were like on the verge of tears, uh, you know, performing the track. It was a, it was a very powerful rendition. And, um, uh, you know, people in the crowd got pretty whipped up by it too. And oh my God, the people in the fucking crowd. Like, I mean, <laughs> in general, people there were... You know, I, I think of myself these days as getting old to an extent, but people there were so much older than me and my wife uh, on, in general. So going in there, I thought it was going to be a pretty tame experience, but my fucking God, people were... Th there was not a seat in the house that was filled, even though it was seated, because everybody was just standing and dancing in their seats and, like, going crazy and uh, uh, jumping up and down. Um <laughs> And uh, despite the fact that it was uh, not a huge theater and it had very steep and very narrow like steps going up and down in between the sections, people were dancing in the frigging aisles and like running up and down the stairs. And uh, pe people were smoking a lot of weed, too. So 
<laughs> so, so, so those old people went nuts. Those old people went uh, insane. So, uh, sh- shout out to them. They, they should, they should go more nuts more often, I guess. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, I hope you guys uh, uh, sort of get a chance to see this performance if you haven't already. If there are tickets available in your city, I recommend you try to pick them up because, and, and even if the, the uh, seats aren't even the closest, uh, given the setup and everything, given the way that David approached kind of the visuals of this with his band, um, it is pretty awesome. It is pretty uh, uh, inventive. And um, I really enjoyed myself. Definitely one of the best concerts I've ever been to, period, uh, from the performance quality to the sound quality to just the vision of seeing everybody perform uh, it was just really great and honestly I'm, I'm really enamored with the uh the new material that david has recorded for this uh, latest record too which helps a lot and it was a pretty decent ratio of of new to new to old songs you know new versus familiar tracks um but still you know even with as much as him and his band leaned on and relied on that newer material didn't really ruin the sensation of the concert because the newer material is really good, is really quality, uh, very funky too. So, you know, if, if, you, if you're looking for those funky art rock, uh, <laughs> I guess I'll call it that, uh, bangers, uh, David definitely delivers uh, from what I've been hearing on this new record. And uh, again, review on that very soon. Uh, shout out again to uh, the good people over at Feedmans for the uh, Sponsorship, again, more info down there in the description box. And thank you to uh, David for the uh, amazing performance. I had a really great time. Uh, Over here next to my head is another video that you guys can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, David Byrne, forever.